Hello and welcome to Remnant 2. Today, I'm going to show you my cooldown build. It's Friday, finally off work, and I gotta actually like go over it. Been working on it all week. I've cleared Nerud with it. I've cleared Lawson with it. It's a lot of fun. And the, the thing about this whole thing, we're stacking a ton of skill cooldown reduction, and it has a ton of flexibility in what you want to do. Now, I've leaned into this heavy gunslinger idea, and I've got the dog, and that's what I decided to lean into. But because the basic idea is like really simple you can do whatever you want with it and you can make it as strong as you want so like mine right now like 90 percent of my builds not super meta not super op and like oh my god double ten thousand dollar crits whatever right it's fun it's fun there's a lot of very satisfying aspects to it which is a lot of ease of use that i really enjoy it's just satisfying so let's kind of go over it right and we and we went through an apocalypse let me say that now it's on Apocalypse. That's what I've been testing it on. That's what I've cleared it on. So that's what your gameplay you're going to see. But <clears throat> we're all about cooldown reduction. And if you look on the right side here, I have 80% skill cooldown. That's a lot. I don't think I have to tell you. 80% off of your skill cooldowns is a lot. So if you look at my quick draw skill from the Gunslinger, it has an 8 second cooldown. And it's normally like a 45, 48 second cooldown. So this comes down, it comes back really, really, really fast. And it's very satisfying. Just quick, shoot it off, finish them off. Really fun. So how are we pulling this off, right? So we've got a concoction on. It's a xenoplasm. Reduces our skill cooldowns by 10%. So you do want that because we want more skill cooldown reduction. And then in our relic, the relic itself is not super important. But if you really wanted, there is the diverting heart. When you use this, it reduces all your skill cooldowns. But it doesn't provide any healing. It's not necessary. I don't really feel like using it. I do actually want some healing. Uh, I'm using the Lifeless Heart for the double capacity and healing the dog. But the rune is what's important. So we got 10% school cooldown reduction on there. So there you go. There's some of it there. And then over here on the right, we've got the Black Pawn Stamp. This is another 10%. The Burden of the Rebel, another 15% off our cooldowns. And then Burden of the Stargazer, another 15%. And last but not least is our Trait Expertise maxed out at level 10 it's another 20 percent off so that's how we're getting that 80 percent skill cooldown reduction so you put on each of those things you know these three rings 20 points in expertise a rune in here and the uh you know concoction and you've got a ton of skill cooldown things you know like i said i'm using it with gunslinger i had i was messing around a little bit with a summoner uh right here and i was just constantly able to summon dudes explode them summon them explode them summon them explode them a lot of fun so you can totally mess around with different archetypes and skills and make things work but let's go over the rest of the nitty-gritty of what i'm doing so i'm leading into the heavy like gunslinger thing i wanted to do it as a gunslinger so i've got the full high noon kind of gunslinger armor on uh i'm leaning into the skill power like the damage of my skill so not just skill cooldowns i want my skill damage to be higher right i want this to do a lot of damage i want my dog to do a lot of damage so i've also got skill damage runes as well as a mod cast speed or a skill cast speed because you want this to come out as fast as possible being able to use our dog skill as fast as possible is really nice uh the amulet i have on is a silver ribbon so it increases our skill damage by 25 percent and then when we activate a skill it grants us haste for 15 seconds our skills are coming down so fast that we're going to constantly have haste, which is fantastic. Uh, the thing to say with all these cooldowns too is because they're so fast, like all the dog abilities, they come off cooldown before they're actually like over. So we can constantly have the guard dog effect, support dog, attack dog, damage boost, damage reduction, or healing. Like we can always have an effect on there for yourself or your teammates. So it's really nice. Now, after that, right... Uh, for this kind of specific setup, uh, these two rings, I tend to swap around a bit depending on how I'm really feeling. Maximum cooldown reduction, I take Burden of the Starcaser. If I'm kind of leaning a little bit more damage, I'll put on Burden of the Destroyer and maybe like the um, probability cord for the extra crit damage because our quick draw is guaranteeing critical hits. So our probability cord is going to do make it do more damage. But since we have Burden of the Stargazer on, increases our skill cooldown reduction, right? But whenever we activate a skill, it costs 15% of our health. So in order to mitigate that, we have on the stream coupler. So every time we use a skill, it regenerates 10% of our maximum health over 5 seconds. So it mitigates that cost. Now, in order to make it like actually cover the full cost, I put on 
uh, where's that? We got a couple points into regrowth, five points there, and then I think like eight points into triage, so that we've got another 40% healing. So I think that makes this cover it, and then with the regrowth on top of it, it's it's pretty solid. Like we're pretty okay there. Uh, after that, now we're very squishy here. Uh, obviously, this armor is okay. It's not super heavy though, and on apocalypse, you can take a lot of damage. Uh, you can see on my left, I've only got 31% damage reduction. I've only got 106 health. A lot of my trait points I put into just a bunch of different things. I did not put in anything into defense, really. Well, I say that. That's not true. I put 10 points into Untouchable, making my evade window better. And then I also put 10 points into fitness so that my evade distance is a little bit better. Keeps us out of trouble. So I re I've been enjoying that. I think it's a lot of fun. But depending on how you want to play defensively, maybe you want to put points into, you know, like Fortify or Bark Skin or something and then actually equip some heavier armor. Uh, something I would say for this build too, and for like any kind of like skill based build, uh, the casting speed, really nice, great quality of life. Like you don't realize how much of a difference it makes until you've been using it a bit and then you take it off and then you really feel like how slow it is. So having that casting speed rune on here is great. And that's why I also put a bunch of points into flash caster so that again, my mod and skill casting speed is faster. So we're able to get these quick shots out faster we're able to get the attack dog stuff out faster like it's all just nice and fast so that's pretty much it i'm not gonna really dig super deep into more details just like i could and if you guys want me to i'll go back over it at some point but for the most part it's it's pretty self-explanatory man like i don't know what else to say about it but as we go i'll explain some more things it's got some it's like i said it's satisfying uh the skills coming off cooldown really fast is really satisfying it and the quick draw skill in particular it uh you know it auto aims it's just free damage you know like even though it costs health we're not using ammo we're not really like having a long cooldown associated with it so it's kind of just free damage to just clear trash guys and then even on bosses it does help out a bit because you could just click let it shoot off as things, call it good. If you really want, you press and you hold the shot so that you can get those weak spot hits. They're all guaranteed critical hits, so you can really get a lot of damage. Now, currently, too, I have on the attack dog buff, so we get a lot of extra damage. I was fighting uh, Fei Lin, and he had thick skin on, and I was getting really tired of it, so I was trying to maximize as much damage as I could do, so I've got that on. But if you really want to, like, help mitigate some more off of the Stargazer thing, put on the... Um, the healing dog thing that'll work really nicely uh i also really like the guard dog because this drawing aggro is fantastic but watch how quickly this comes back ready we're watching it's just gonna clear him boom he's gone lots of damage he's melted and our skill is already like halfway off cooldown and so you know we don't even have to like really worry about it i took a couple shots there didn't really have to do it though we keep running forward it's ready to go like that bang there he goes there's mover dudes on the way Oh, there they go. By the time he comes down, skill should be ready. Just like this. Or we just let the dog do its thing. Though, if you notice right there, I hit the skill. And sometimes, you know, it aims at anybody who's in front of you. But sometimes it, like, auto-aim gets a little jank. And so it definitely, like, it didn't do anything there, right? So that's pretty annoying. Uh, let's send in the dog. Let's go ahead and activate this ability now. And then, pow, 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 pow. Bam, there they go. Now, that's a bad thing sometimes with the skill is... You know, it splits the damage across multiple guys if they're in front of you. And sometimes you can't actually finish them off. So you have to rely on doing some more double tap things in order to make it happen. But the dog does help with that. The um, help master is kind of nice. I've been using the Western Classic. I, that's just been a ton of fun. Uh, I haven't really touched on the guns, which I apologize for. But part of the reason for that is because... It's just not important for the build, dude. It's not about the guns. It's not really about the armor or anything like that. It's about having lots of skill cooldowns and then watching them just... Because you just keep using the skill over and over again. And I, if I was better about it, I would constantly have the dog buff up. So that, you know, I would always have that extra damage going. And down they go. Uh, when I get up to a spot up here, I'll go over my guns and what exactly I'm using. Since, you know, even though it's not important... It'd still be nice to tell you, right? Oh, there's an elite dude. Let's go ahead and buff our thing now. Now, we use our relic here. We've got double uses, so we want to make sure that we're buffing our dog as much as possible, right? There's no reason not to. Bang, 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 bang. Activate this. Oh, I messed it up. So, see, this is part of us being really squishy, right? I have, like, no armor. I did not dodge that. I should have dodged it. 
he staggered. Oh, broke open his chest. Go get him, dog. We can totally use our dog skill now, but we didn't need to, so it's fine. So go ahead and use a little relic now. So you do have to be careful. With my specific setup right now, you saw we almost got completely one shot. So definitely have to be careful. Uh, Gun-wise, using the Huntmaster feels like something a cowboy might use. Song of Aphir, because that's great for uh, just flyers, which I find really annoying. Ghost Shell is my mutator, getting consecutive weak shot hits, weak spot hits makes the next ones like damaging more damaging increase a weak spot critical chance and stuff just more damage right uh western classic it's a revolver it's really fun uh, i put hot shot on it for fun and then twisting wounds i have the dog the dog is inflicting bleeding twisting wound increases the damage of the gun to bleeding targets so it just made sense to me plus it's another source of being able to apply bleed uh, I was playing against a lot of, like, guys who kept having, like, Regenerator and Empathy and things like that. So it was really annoying. So that was kind of the first thing that made me go, I'm going to put more bleeding on these dudes because F that, you know. But it is a lot of fun. Sometimes you get the extra dot, it finishes guys off. Uh, but having the, you know, the focus of the build, skill cooldown, I mean, you can see how fast it comes back. It's nice for some of the bosses because you can just constantly just hit it. Nice, consistent, extra DPS. Like I said, it's not mind-blowing numbers or anything like that, but it is fun. And you could always just hold it and then get that weak spot hit with some one singular charge shot. And most of the time, I've been getting, you know, like 4,000 crits or something like that, at least as far as, like, getting weak spot hits, you know? Uh, something I should state as well. I want to make sure it's kind of clear. So anytime you have, like, increased skill damage things, like from our uh, Silver Ribbon, Increases skill damage by 25%. It's not just increasing the quick draw skill. It's not only applying to like skills you have to activate to deal damage. It also applies to your dog. Dog deals more damage. The um, turret, that counts as skill damage. So the silver ribbon buffs that. Uh, having your summons, it buffs them as well. So that's really helpful. My game kind of freaked out for a second there. Back away from that. Yeah, we're good there. Bang, 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 bang. Dog will finish him there. Yeah, so having the extra skill damage affects it a little bit more than you might think it would. Um, and another good thing about this setup, depending on how like your run is going, very squishy, right? Sometimes I'm playing, it's late in the day, I'm tired, I've had a beer, days, the work has just been rough, and um, I'm just not on the top of my game, right? And so I'm dying a lot. Obviously, I could swap around armor, make myself more survivable, but what you could do instead is just swap around here. Put your dog as your primary, and then the dog picks you up. You use this one right here, the Lifeless Heart. It's got 20 charges, plenty of charges for the dog to help keep you, like, going, right? So that's always kind of an option. I like the option as well. We use that. Why not? It does give us a little bit of regeneration, which is nice. It will kind of cover what we lost. It's not huge, but let's go ahead and use a relic here. And then we'll clear some of these guys. Ready? Bang, 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 bang. And we'll finish them off with the revolver. There he is. Oh, there's two of them for some reason. Nice. Uh, and then what I'll do when I clear these guys, I'm going to put on maybe the summoner. And I'll show you guys, like, how fast that one's coming back. So even though I'm, like, really digging the, um, the gunslinger setup, I'll tell you, man, the... Uh, summoner just like constant summoning things and exploding them super satisfying super super satisfying uh, let's clear them with that just like that activate this now we watch for him on the side don't know how those shots didn't hit him kind of annoying i just want to keep moving because i don't want to get hit like i could totally try and like really focus on dealing some damage see there's that focus shot right there clears him up nice and easy as long as you're good at like getting it on target you'll be set but let's go ahead and swap this now, right? Let's go ahead and put this on to the summoner right there. Um, we'll put on the flyers because I, the hollows have grown on me, but the exploding ability of this one sends off the homing projectiles, which is going to be really nice for the, uh, you know, the flying guys. Uh, also, it did mess up my trait points a little bit. I'm not going to put the trait points anywhere because um, I really, like, I want to keep with my actual setup, and I really don't want to have to, like, reset all my traits, so... We keep going. Here we go. We'll summon a dude. There he is. Let's summon another one. Already ready. Pop the dog ability as well. I took a lot of damage there for some reason. And you can see just like how much damage those guys are doing. All the extra skill like damage is really nice. Plus, I mean, the summons are just really strong in general. And the uh, the hunt master or the what's it called? The handler, not the hunt master. The handler 
uh, sort of like perks, they give you a lot of like, uh, they give you some skill damage and stuff. But look, I blew them up. Skills are already off cooldown, right? There's one. We're about to have our second guy resummon again, just like that. And then we blow them up. Boop. There they go. Send off some homing projectiles. I'm taking a lot of extra hits, which is really bad, actually. And then the good thing is, too, right? They leave the healing puddles. So even though we're sacrificing health and stuff, and we've got the burden of the Stargazer, so we're, like, sacrificing more health, they leave a little healing puddle. Then you go over, and it just tops it back up. And then we summon more dudes. Oh, look, we've got one back. Now we've got two back. And just like that, good to go. And we can keep it going. There's some dudes right there. There's some dudes right there. They're already doing the work for me already. Mostly, uh, I have found that the quick, like, explode resummon minions thing works really well on, like, a bigger target, a boss guy. Because they're already doing a ton of damage to the, um, you know, to little trash guys. So it's, like, sort of overkill. You know what I mean? Uh, but let's try it. You know, I haven't really messed with it on the, um, the turret one. So maybe we'll try it out on the turret one and we'll see how that skill cooldown is. Hi. All right, so now we've got the Engineer on. One thing was having the Engineer on. Uh, actually, our skill cooldown is a little messed up now. We're going to have to fix that. But now we've got a little bit more damage reduction thanks to Fortify. So let's go ahead and fix our expertise. And then, um, I don't know. What else did I lose? Regrowth, right? I lost some points in regrowth. Let's go ahead and put some points there. Bam. All right, moving on. So watch how quick the turret comes out. Look how quick that is. See how much that is? It's so nice. And then look at how much damage they're doing. It's just shredding dudes, thanks to the skill damage. Let's go ahead and uh, pull him back. I think. I pulled back. But I don't know the skill cooldown, actually. Um, let me double check something. That kind of hurt. I think it affects high tech. Yeah, look how fast that high tech uh, thing comes off cooldown. 12 seconds. 12 seconds for a faster fire rate, infinite ammo on the turret. That's, that's bananas, dude. Like, you could put down the turret, and then it will never stop shooting. Like, you'll never run out of ammo. Like, where is my turret, by the way? Oh, finally. Thank you. All right. Set him down. Boom. Roll away. Let's activate it now. And there it goes. Look at all the damage. Look how fast it's shooting. Like, isn't that freaking nuts? Go get him, dog. Let's actually buff ourselves here. There we go. And there it goes. Let's activate it again. Maybe. Ooh, can I not? Or is it still working? I can't tell. The ammo is looking a little weird, dude. Oh, no, there it is. Now it's done. But look, it's already ready, dude. Like, we could use it again. And you see our ammo just fine. So, look how, look how stupid that combo is. Look how good that is. Cooldown reduction on your skills. Very strong. I would say very strong. And while I love the quick draw thing, and I think it's really fun, I mean, it's definitely not like the top thing that you can do, right? And you could even like, depending on how you want to run things, like I'm using the dog because I'm really liking the dog, but maybe you do really want to use the freaking turret sting and quick draw. So put that on there and then put the other one, you know, whatever, yada, yada. Uh, let's put on the, um, let's put on Archon, man. And then this one has a, a 19 second cooldown how long does it last 30 seconds does it i don't think that one i don't think this skill starts its cooldown until it's actually done right let me see no it doesn't look like it but even that like it comes back really fast like that's kind of nice right like how fast that comes back and i mean this archon the havoc form is very solid i mean look 1400 damage per second from its like basic fire ability which is fantastic the, the blink deals a good amount of damage like it's just a lot of extra damage and then you could go to the um what's it called go to challenger shockwave cooldown 11 seconds not awful but it has two charges dealing like 700 damage you know they're decent there's a lot of there's a lot of flexibility you can do with this whole like setup I just, I personally prefer finding things that, um, that actually deal damage, you know, and then playing off of that. Uh, but let's go ahead and fix some of our traits. And one more point there. Cool. Bam. We rest it there. We're all set off cooldown. Uh, let's clear this boss fight and I guess call it good or something, dude. That's pretty much the build. That's the setup, dude. 
but lots of cooldown reduction. If you haven't tried it, uh, do it. You should do it. It's all it's a ton of fun, and if you put the diverting heart on, you're just gonna go like way over the top. You're gonna lose out on the healing, which sucks. Um, I don't think I had to talk to this dude, did I? Um, yeah, diverting heart is just gonna put you like way over the top as far as cooldowns go, and you can have yourself a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pow. There we go. Oh, it's bleeding. Oh, yeah, because we've got the thing. That's actually dealing a good amount of damage, surprisingly. Let's go ahead and buff ourselves with the dog. I'll try and make sure that I'm constantly using it. Clear them like that. Good deal. Good thing with those guys, too, right? Their weak point is, like, right center mass. So the, uh, the gunslinger thing, the quick draw, tends to aim center mass. So it tends to get weak point hits pretty well on them, which is really nice. Uh, because you can't always get that off of some of the enemies, which can be a little frustrating. Alright, and now we've got more dudes. Let's activate the dog ability again. We've got more damage going. There they are. We'll move forward a little bit. There we go. There are two of them. Watch out for some more dudes listening. We want to listen. You need to use sounds to your advantage. But luckily... Okay, it's the next day. Started editing the video this morning and uh, realized uh, it got ruined. The last part of it anyways, right? So here we are again. We're going to fight Keula. That'll be our boss encounter, you know? So I really wanted to try the full engineer. Do an actual try with the engineer. It was like skill cooldown. So we're going to run this with the uh, the Vulcan one because Keula is in a bunch of water, which means the flame server is not going to really do as much, I don't think. And then the... Uh, the impact cannon impact cannon would probably be fine maybe but i feel like this is maybe just going to be my best choice for right now uh and if you notice i went ahead and i threw a bunch of heavy armor on because i was like well if we're gonna try it differently let's make it a little more different so we've got some heavy armor that capitalizes on the fortify a little bit more and that's pretty much the only difference i put on corrosive rounds because again she's in water fire's not going to do much so we'll see how it goes That should be fun, maybe, right? I'm hoping. I'm really sad the end of my recording there got messed up. Freaking amazing top-of-the-line gameplay. Lost forever, man. But let's do it. Here we are. And we gotta be careful because we don't want to accidentally get caught by something. And... Whoop. Drop that. And then it starts unloading on her. Party and drain. Okay. Now, there we go. Activate that ability now so it's faster. We start unloading. We also need to make sure that we're activating our dog ability so we get that extra damage. It's doing a pretty solid amount of damage. Dodge. Dodge. Roll forward. Run back this way. We're trying to try and keep it in line with the turret so it's like, what is it shooting at, actually? It's really weird. Turret time. Should be pretty solid here. Alright, it's done with its, like, overclock thing. Oh, can I not use it? No, I still got 10 seconds. Now the cooldown has started. All right, so I was wrong earlier. I had the timing wrong. We're going to make some distance so we can use a relic, right? One second. Now we use the overclock. There we go. Just in time for it to not run out of ammo. And now we start going crazy. Roll backwards. Now let's try and use a relic here. We're going to have to be careful, though. Yep. Okay, dodge. Dodge. We did not get the relic out, did we? Or maybe we did. Get it back. Make sure it's got plenty of ammo. Oop. Oop. Dodge attack. There we go. Activating our dog ability again. Activate this one. Get it some corrosion going on. We decrease armor. More, you know, damage over time effects on it. There we go. That got our gun some more ammo, which is great. We've got two seconds left before we can actually, like, overclock it again. Now we can. Oh, it's gone. Let's give it a second. So we run over here. We're going to go ahead and drop it now, and then overclock. Roll back. Uh oh too early in that dodge. That was really unfortunate. Need to be very careful here, because I can totally love this right now. Watch for her jumping up, and then roll. There we go. Here comes a wave. Roll forward. And easy peasy. Nice. I mean, we really only ran out of ammo on the turret that one time. Like, the... You know, my expertise is a little messed up. So, I actually have... Um, where is it at? Where's my cooldown reduction? We're at 78% cooldown reduction. So, our um, little overclock thing 
is one second longer on the cooldown than it was previously. So, you know, that's because our trait points got messed up when I swapped around into the engineer right before this fight. So, um, you know, if you actually get it set up right, you'd have another second, like, to have this thing ready, which maybe would keep you from ever running out of ammo. And then if you're good about using your relic when the, like, actual overclock is, you know, not on your turret, you can give it more ammo back so that it's not running out of ammo, and then you can make sure it's got that infinite ammo and speed. But that was a pretty clean fight. Pretty, pretty clean fight. A couple spots got a little close because I got a little sloppy there. But on the whole, worked out. And I mean, the extra armor and stuff, that definitely made a difference. Because if I had been doing that with my other setup where I had... Because uh, right now I have 45% damage reduction. So if I had been down at 31% damage reduction, things would have been a bit dicier. Now, maybe... I, things would have been better for me at the same time because I could have focused on more gunplay instead of just relying on the turret but at the same time when you run the turret like that that's the point of it the turret is your gunplay like the build is about using your skills just like when I use quick draw it's that's what the build is about is using quick draw you know and earlier I talked about like oh do the challenger and that's gonna do like the shockwave and that'll be good but that you don't even have to use that one because like yeah i was thinking about that because silver ribbon is increasing my skill damage but like i said you could totally swap this out for like the um you could swap it for the jester's bell increasing your modern skill cast speed and then whenever you activate one increases all your damage dealt for 20 by 20 percent for 15 seconds so then it doesn't matter as long as you're using skills you're doing more damage so you could totally just swap it over into challenger constantly have your um you know, you're using Juggernaut every 14 seconds, you know, using Rampage every 20 seconds, you know, whatever it happens to be. Same thing with Alchemist. Like, this is 15 seconds, 15 seconds, 18 seconds. Like, all of them really fast. What's the wormhole cooldown? Eight second cooldown on the wormhole, dude. You'll be teleporting all over the place. You'd be leaving a ton of clones just distracting the enemies. 18 seconds on this? Man, it's just... I mean, yeah, use that with the invader, dude. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Uh, if you do this, 18 second cooldown on the just auto dodges. Now, I don't think the cooldown starts until it's gone. So you have to make sure that you're safe for 18 seconds. But at the same time, like, I don't know. Seems, seems pretty solid. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. That's that's just my, my take on it all. Where did these 10 points come from? But um, that's the build, dude that's that's pretty much it lots of cooldown reduction use your skills like use your skills don't make the mistakes that i do sometimes where i like refuse to use them because i'm so used to not using them that's what your build's about make sure you're utilizing your strengths and i mean another thing i should i kind of noticed there at the end not we can test it real quick so let's look at this let's see how much my um we'll test it in the the shooting range real quick instead of right here all right, so the thing I wanted to test, when we use a relic on the Gunslinger, we have the uh, sleight of hand perk. So using a relic reloads our weapons and then increases range damage by 15% for 10 seconds. And I feel like I noticed it increasing the damage on our quick draw, which would be pretty nice. So let's test it real quick. Baseline, this is doing 1559 damage, right? So now we scoot back a little bit. It's reloaded here in a couple seconds. Now we use our relic, pow, and then, nope, it does not. For some reason, I really thought it increased the damage. Well, never mind then. But if I wanted to show you guys something real quick, when I was talking about different rings, uh, you know, I talked about using Burden of the Destroyer, throw on the Probability Cord, and then uh, right here. And then what you can get on your little quick draw skill is, pow, 2,000 damage. And I mean, that doesn't seem like a huge difference. You're like, oh, it's like 500 more. It's okay. But I mean... It's basically a whole nother shot, essentially, compared to what it had before. Uh, the cooldown's a little bit slower now. It's like 12 seconds instead of 8, right? 14 seconds. But the thing to consider is that on some of those encounters earlier, I would use a, the quick draw, and I would shoot two guys and then leave both of them with like a tiny bit of health. With that slight damage increase, you can clear two trash enemies with a single use of your skill, and you'll be fine. Or just finish dudes off and finish off another dude. Like, you know, that little bit of damage can really add up. Especially, like, if we can consider the weak spot sh hits, you know. So that's 4,000 damage right there. And then, if you go back to my other setup with the Stargazer and 
honestly, whatever at this point, as long as it's not an extra damage thing. So instead of 4082, we've got 31. You know, that's a 900 damage increase. So it's something to kind of think about if you're really not leaning in. You really don't want to do the Burden of a Stargazer thing. But again, it kind of depends on what you have set up because though that combo I was showing there really only applies when I'm doing the quick draw thing. Burden of Destroyer is obviously going to help everything you do, but whatever. That's pretty much a build, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't done the cooldown stuff, I suggest trying it out a little bit because just being able to use your skills a lot turns out a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Always really appreciate it when you guys check it out. And as always, take care.